This is Windows 11 running on a smartphone. I mean, that Windows 11. Not a virtual machine, not a remote desktop. This is running natively on a smartphone. Touch screens works fine, really smooth, no lags at all. You can see the specs of the phone in Task Manager, which suggests a Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chip powering this unit. So obviously, I'm not lying to you. Actually, this is a OnePlus 6T model running Windows 11. And you can even run some decent AAA titles on that. Seriously, this thing is much more powerful than you think. Pretty impressive, right? Yeah, PC gaming and Windows 11 all on a smartphone. And today, we are going to show you how exactly this works. Actually, it's not that hard to understand. As you may know, Microsoft does provide an ARM version of Windows, which you can find on the Surface Pro X or other ARM-based PCs. Your smartphone, however, is also based on ARM processor. And since Qualcomm is making those processors for both your phones and PCs, some PC drivers can even be compatible with your phones. So running Windows on a smartphone isn't as hard as it sounds. The real problem comes down to the booting process, the UEFI. But how could you load UEFI in the booting to Windows on an Android smartphone? Well, to solve the problem, let me introduce you Project Renegade. This is an open source project that helps you to run Windows Linux natively on smartphone. They came up with this idea of faking your Windows UEFI as a Linux kernel. So when booting from it, your phone will be like, uh, yeah, it's a Linux kernel, so you must be running Android OS, right? Yeah. I'm running Windows 11 instead. <laughs> With the tools they provide, you can compile UEFI by yourself or just find one that works for your device. And that is the disguised Linux kernel that helps you to boot desktop OS from Android bootloader. And also, they gather a lot of useful drivers and turn them a bit to adapt to your smartphone. Particularly the Snapdragon 845 platform. So if you are using 845 chips, you can definitely check this out. I have linked the Project Renegade and a step-by-step -step tutorial in the description below. The installation process is ah, like a mess. You will experience constant crashes, blue screen of dust, and either of those happens, you may have to reset the phone for stuff from the very beginning. So after centuries of tickering, tweaking, and praying to the father of Windows, here we are, the one and only Windows 11. Let's see, uh, seems like the touchscreen works, but uh, the UI is kind of terrible, so you definitely need a mouse and keyboard to set everything up. But anyway, this is the Windows 11 desktop on a smartphone. Look at the star menu, and you can even lock the screen and swipe up to unlock. Wow, that actually feels like Windows phone is still alive. Let's flip the screen and set the DPI. Well, it looks much more like a PC now. Take a look at the specs. We got eight CPU cores from Snapdragon 845 chip, eight gigs of RAM, and of course the GPU, Adreno 630. Looks like the GPU drivers is working just fine. So maybe we should run some benchmarks. We got a bit over a thousand on Cinebench R23 multi-core and a stunning 250 on single core. I bet you can't imagine how slow it is until it takes like uh, 53 minutes to finish the whole test. Yeah, it's pretty painful to make this video for sure. But considering Cinebench is an x86 app and does not natively support ARM, it's really not that bad. After all, we are emulating desktop chips with an old smartphone processor, and the multi-core performance is still on par with the, let's say, 4th gen Intel mobile chip, which is still fine, I think. And for the GPU, we got about 2900 on the 3 d Mark Night Ray. That's about the same as a, a GT630 GPU. That's like uh, 80 years ago, I guess. But anyway, I think we definitely had a chance to run some modern games on it. And let's do it! The first question we are going to ask, you bet, can it run Crisis? I mean, the most power-hungry, Crisis 3. Here we go, we got an AMD logo showing on a smartphone, how weird is that? Technically, it's not a lie, since Adreno GPU originated from AMD technologies back in 2008. Okay, the menu looks very promising at a stable 60 FPS. Looks like we got a native 1080p res, and I will be super surprised if this even runs. Oh, wait a minute. Almost forgot about the thermos. <laughs> yeah, the phone is burning right now. I guess we should add an active cooler on that to make sure it doesn't explode. Alright, moment of truth. Did it really run crisis? It works! 
Apparently, we're not getting a lot of frame rates here, and the game is a bit janky, but hey, it works. And that is amazing. Have you ever seen such graphics on a smartphone? Let's try to walk and shoot a bit. It's not really that playable, but still, I'm super satisfied with this. I mean, yeah, we are getting a single digit frame rate, but remember, this is 1080p resolution. Desktop level graphics, so if we can lower the resolution down, it might be actually playable, right? But the problem is, we can't really switch res easily on the smartphone. Neither from a desktop, nor inside a game. So if you want to lower the res down, you need to be a little bit creative. Luckily, with the help of the window mode, you can change the resolution to anything you want. So what we can do here is setting the rest down to 540p, let's say, with window mode, and then use the window's magnifier to enlarge the window size, so it looks like a full screen. What a genius idea, right? As expected, we got around 30 frames per second this time, and that is totally playable. Um, okay, forgot what I said, we can only get about 10 something frames per second when actually playing. The frame drops a lot in complicated things like this with freeze and other steps, and I guess the problem right now is a CPU bottleneck. This may not be a great gaming experience, but hey, it's a three years old smartphone, remember? And we are running the Notorious Crisis 3, so I think this is more than enough. Can it run Crisis? Yes, it can. And now, let's try some other games, like CSGO. Since we have run Crisis with no issue, this should be a piece of cake. And guess what? It definitely runs better than Crisis. We are at a native 1080p, and we got around 20 to 30 frames per second on average. That is pretty smooth. So why don't we just have some fun with it? Weird. Maybe we should take a look at the task manager, and we can see the GPU usage is even lower than 30%, so we got the CPU bottleneck again. In fact, this happens in quite a lot of games. For example, in Skyrim, you almost never fully utilize your GPU in the low res. At the first moment, you can get a frame rate about as high as uh, 40 frames per second, but as you move the camera to a complicated thing, the frame rate drops massively. But luckily, some games we tried actually had a really good performance. This is Tomb Raider running on a smartphone. At 1080p, we got a solid 20 frames per second, no drops, no problems at all. This is a real AAA title and it's got really decent graphics. So it's a really impressive performance. And if we lower the rest to 540p and zoom in, you know what? We can get a 30, 40 or even 50 frames per second. That is butter smooth. Seriously, when I played Tomb Raider on my old laptop back in 2013, the frame rate is not even higher than that. So should I say this is the flagship graphic quality of mobile gaming? It's just unbelievable. Alright, this game even supports AMD's Trust of X effects, which makes Lara Croft's here a graphic card burner. Maybe we can try a little bit on our smartphone, and wow, we got it! Trust effects on Snapdragon GPUs. Seems like we didn't get any problems other than losing some frames, but hey, look at her hairs, the beautiful hairs. That worth trying, right? Looks like we tortured this smartphone a bit too hard, but hard is never enough, and I think we should try something even bigger. Maybe ray tracing? Well, it's not completely impossible though. Crytek, the developer of Crisis, has supported a special RT with their CE5 engine. Even your GPU does not have any RT cores or uh, hardware accelerating, you can still run ray tracing. They have this demo called Neo Noir that you can download for free, so let's try that on our smartphone. We are now in the menu and my cursor barely even moves. I have a bad feeling about this. Wow, it's, it's actually running! So I guess that ray tracing does work on Snapdragon 845, but the frame rate here is a bit... Well, we got a 0.2 FPS, that is one frame every 5 seconds. That feels like an eternity. Like even on Cinema 4D, if you know what I mean. Actually, we are not even using GPU at all. And after some work are done, we think there might be a problem related to Qualcomm's GPU driver. Those tiny old GPUs just won't run 64-bit games at all. Instead, the games are running on a virtual GPU simulated by CPU. No wonder why the performance is so bad. 
The same thing happens in GTA 5. You can definitely enter the game, but got a frame rate lower than 1 frames per second. I mean, imagine playing GTA 5 on a smartphone. That is really something everyone's dreaming about, right? I wish we could really achieve that.